Dr. Brightman, can you talk about IPT and exactly what that is? When somebody gets the big C cancer, they know that they're in for some horrendous chemotherapy mm -hmm. with all the dire side effects that occur. Conventional chemotherapy knocks off the immune system. It drops the white count to dangerous levels. Uh, it drops the hemoglobin, the red blood cell count, to low levels. They get substantially anemic. It lowers the plate counts, platelet counts so that they can develop uh, gastrointestinal bleeding. They're dire effects. Therefore, in conventional chemotherapy, what they do is they give the patient an overwhelming dose of one chemotherapeutic drug. They have to do that in order to bathe, to bathe the cancer cells to kill them. But unfortunately, they also bathe all the good cells, especially the immune system, which means the platelets, the white blood count, and the red blood cells. So they drop to dangerous levels. As a result, after they give the first course, which might mean one drug on day one, and either the same drugs on day two and three, or another drug, a second drug, on days two and three, and then, and then they have to wait three weeks for the immune system to recover, sometimes longer. Mm -hmm. They have to do blood counts to see if the immune system has recovered. When I go to their conferences, I chide them. I say, what do you think the cancer cells are doing during that hiatus when you're waiting three weeks or so? Do you think they're on a coffee break? Mm -hmm. No, they're like Al-Qaeda. They're regrouping, rearming, and ready to go forth in battle. And meanwhile, the DNA of the cancer cells are developing an immunity to the chemotherapeutic drugs that have been used. Because of that hiatus, they're able to change their DNA, mm -hmm. so they're immune. What IPT does, it takes advantage of our, part our part particular attribute of the cancer cells. That is, they have 16 times the number of insulin receptors on them, insulin and insulin-like receptors, so that they can grab all the glucose. Glucose is the only thing that cancer cells metabolize. Mm -hmm. Our normal cells metabolize also fats and proteins, but insulin brings across the glucose. When most people think of insulin, they think of diabetes. Insulin is used to treat diabetes, but insulin is an eclectic hormone. That is, it brings other substances across the cell membrane as well as glucose. It brings across essential amino acids, most of the fatty acids, most of the antibiotics. In fact, many, many chemotherapeutic agents are antibiotics. So insulin brings all these across the cell membrane to the interior of the cell so that the cell can metabolize them. But one other thing the insulin does is it brings across the chemotherapeutic agents. So what we do is we use this attribute of the cancer cell, that is 16 times the number of insulin receptors, to work against the cancer cells. What we do is we start an IV in the patient and then we administer a measured, a calculated amount of a rapid-acting insulin, Humalog. It has just a 30-minute half-life. Mm. And we, what we do is we drop the glucose level to beneath what is called the glucose quotient. There's not enough glucose in the blood anymore for the glucose to be forced across the cell membrane. So the cancer cells, if I might give them a personality for a moment, they're yelling and screaming, where's my glucose? It can't get the glucose because the glucose quotient is too low. That is what we call the therapeutic moment. And at that time, we administer the chemotherapeutic drugs. And the cancer cell, thinking it's sort of a Trojan horse type mm -hmm. thing, thinking if the insulin is bringing it, it must be good. So it takes in the chemotherapeutic agents that we have just administered, and the cells die. The population of cancer cells in the body, if I might use it like this, they're not lined up like this, they're distributed throughout the body, but if you have a population like this, only 4% to 7% are in the adult phase of the cancer cell at any one time. The rest of the cells are in maturation stages. I might call them the baby cells are infant uh, childhood cells, then they go through several metabolic processes and they'd graduate into 
adolescent juvenile and more metabolic processes, and finally they're adult cells. Only in the adult phase can they harm the person. Only in the adult phase can they reproduce themselves, where in the mother cell divides into two daughter cells, they go to the end of the line and go through the metabolic pathways again to become adults. We can kill them only in the adult phase. So we want them to get into the adult phase, but we want to kill them before they can reproduce. Mm -hmm. In conventional chemotherapy, we don't, they don't kill them right away. They have to wait three weeks so the cancer cells can reproduce again, those that remain, Sure. And, and send new baby cells back to the end of the line to go through the metabolic pathways. Since we use, we can direct all our chemotherapeutic agents to the cancer cell because of the insulin that we use, we're able to use only 10% the dose that conventional chemotherapy does because we can direct it all to the cancer cell. Very little get, gets to the uh, good cells, so the side effects are markedly reduced. Uh, it's rare that we get hair loss. We've had only three patients with hair loss in nine and a half years. Hmm. Um, rarely, uh, it's unusual to get nausea or vomiting, and that happens only during the first two treatments, and we handle that very easily. Constipation we handle very easily. We don't have the severe side effects in conventional chemotherapy has. In addition to that, since we're using only 10% the dose, we get to use three and sometimes even four different chemotherapeutic agents. There's several different categories of chemotherapeutic agents. Each category attacks the cancer cell by a different mechanism of action. Some categories attack the DNA of the cancer cell. Others attack the mitochondrion, the um, energy producing organelle mm -hmm. of the cell. If the cell can't produce energy, it wastes away and dies. Some attack the microtubules of the cancer cells, and so on, various different methods. So we pick a chemotherapeutic drug in each of three or even four categories, and we administer all of them at the same time. Since it's only 10% the dose, we don't pick any two that are, say, toxic to the liver or nephrotoxic, toxic to the kidneys. So we don't get those to toxicities because we use low doses but they all go to the cancer cells, and they, very little gets to the good cells. As a result, we develop very good results. We have uh, many remissions, and uh, even in the worst case scenario, when we don't get a remission, we at least reduce the cancer cell population in the cancer patient so that the cancer and the patient can live together in harmony neither one bothering the other. And then the patient will get what we call metronomic dosing. No more chemotherapy intravenously. They just take a pill every day for three weeks, off for one week, another three weeks daily, off for another week, and we repeat that. Hmm. And the patient can go on a long time like this. Now, not everybody makes it. I want you to know that. Hmm. But our non-survival rate appears to be much lower than with conventional chemotherapy.